Hello everybody, welcome to a video tutorial on where does all my money go dot com. Uh, today we're going to be simply looking at uh, how to search and interpret um, a basic stock quote. So this is a beginner type post um, and what you'll find um, is I'm going to start here at the uh, google.com website um, and we're going to use actually another of Google's tools and that's known as Google Finance. Um, we want the drop down menu uh, uh, under more and we're going to select the finance tab and this will take us to Google Finance Canada beta. So once you're here you can take a look at a lot of information on the home page for Google Finance. Uh, there's no shortage. Um, index data, charts and, and whatnot. Um, but what you'll see is that uh, there's another search box just like with any kind of uh, Google search. So I'm going to be looking today at uh, Research Emotion or RIM. Um, but I want to make clear that uh, it's, this is not a recommendation to buy, sell, hold, or not hold research in motion. I'm simply using it as a um, um, a stock for this demonstration. So there's one of two ways to get a quote. Um, you can either type in the ticker symbol, and Google will actually suggest uh, ticker symbols for you along the way. Um, or if you don't know the ticker symbol, you can type in the company's name and it will suggest the ticker symbols for you. So what you'll see here is that there's two for research in motion. One for the stock that trades in the states and one for the one that trades in Canada. So RIM trades in Canada, RIMM trades on the NASDAQ. Um, and just as a rule of thumb, if a ticker symbol has four letters in it, it probably trades in the NASDAQ. But we're going to look at the Canadian version today. So here we have it. So here is the uh, the stock quote page for Research in Motion on Google Finance Beta. So there's a lot of things going on on this page. Uh, before we get to the quote line here, um, let's take a look. We've got a chart, a very nice interactive chart, um, which you can scale um, on the fly. Um, lots of things you can do here. We've got news with clickable links. Um, for you to uh, gain some further insight into the stock. We've got a discussion board. We've got uh, related companies if you want to take a look. Um, no shortage of information, so I'll let you play with that once you get here. But let's get back to the task at hand, which is to analyze a simple stock quote. Okay, so we've got Research in Motion, publicly traded company on the TSX, um, used to be the TSE. Um, and the big fat number here, uh, this is the last traded price, and in this case it's the closing price for June 24th. Um, the session is now over. And you can uh, you can see my dedication to my readers at uh, wheredoesallmymoneygo.com. It is almost 2 in the morning. <laughs> in any case, the, um, the stock was down $3.72 on the day. Um, that's indicated by the red negative number. And in a percentage terms, that's negative 2.56% of the share's price. So the first column here, we have the open, the high, the low, and the volume. So the open is simply the price that, uh, the very first price that shares traded hands for um, when the session began. So the very first trade of the day or um, the very first block of shares traded for 145.85 um, per share. Now throughout the day um, it went up and down as uh, stocks normally do so the high on the day was 146.25 and the low on the day was 140 and 50 cents and and of course the close is where it ended so it closed at 141.78. Now getting back to the end of this column the vol just means volume and by volume they mean how many shares traded hands on this particular day and in this particular case it was 2.03 million. If we go to the next column here we've got market cap as the first um, piece of information and that is short for market capitalization and in this case it's 80.01 billion dollars. So where do we get 80.01 billion dollars from? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Um, what we do is if we get ahead of ourselves here and we go down to this column which has the number of shares outstanding, we have 564.31 million shares that are publicly traded. If we multiply that by the per share price of 141.78, you will get 80.01 billion dollars. Very simple. 
Next we have the 52 week high and the 52 week low. So simply the 52 week high is just the highest price that was attained in the last 52 weeks by research in motion. Um, and similarly, uh, during the last 52 weeks, the uh, the lowest price attained was 56.98. Um, so there's always going to be a range, and it can tell you some things about you know how how volatile a stock might be compared to others. Average volume is the average number of shares that trade hands on a given day. Um, so this can be related back to the daily volume for a specific day. Uh, so for example, let's say you had a stock that normally only trades 1 million shares on average uh, in terms of volume. And on one particular day, maybe it was 10 million. Well, that is telling you something. It's telling you that um, you know there's, there's probably something that's happened, something that's changed, or something that's worth investigating at the very least. Um, moving on to the third column here, um, we have the P-E ratio is what this stands for, um, also known as the P-E multiple, also known as price to earnings ratio. So I'm not going to go into detail actually as to what this is today. Um, that is a topic uh, in and of itself. However, I will tell you how it's calculated because it's very easy. You take the price and you divide it by the earnings. Um, the earnings can be found here under earnings per share and in this particular case it's two dollars and thirty cents so if you take that earnings uh, or rather if you take the price 141.78 and divide that by the earnings you're gonna get 61.62 so that's where that number comes from um, it's a very popular uh, ratio uh, and again we'll cover it at some future time on the blog the FPE stands for forward PE ratio so in this case, if we have, say, a forward estimate of earnings, um, then we can calculate a forward P-E ratio. Um, beta is basically uh, a measure of volatility, but uh, actually I should mention why there's no data here. Remember how I said that uh, Google Finance is in beta, st uh, beta testing? Um, so they are missing a couple things, like the volume, the forward P-E, the beta, the dividend, the yield, etc. Uh, but in any case, what would normally go here under beta is the measure of the volatility of the investment um, or the stock. So what that means is, um, well, let me start by saying that the, the beta of the index for the market is always 1. Um, it can't be higher or lower than that. Um, but of the individual investments, the beta helps compare the volatility to the market or the index. So if you have a beta which is greater than 1, it means it's more volatile than the index or the market. If you have a beta less than 1, it means that the volatility is less than the market or the index. So for example, RIM might have a beta of, I don't know, maybe 1.5, because it's generally more volatile, um, being a high-tech stock, than the rest of the index. So if the index is up, say, 1%, chances are um, RIM is going to be up 1.5. And if the market's down 1, RIM is going to be down 1.5. So ideally, you want to look for the same level of long-term return and a lower beta if you can. Uh, earnings per share we talked about. Um, and then moving on to the last column here, um, we also have already talked about the shares outstanding. So Research in Motion has 564.31 million shares outstanding. This last item here um, stands for institutional ownership. And normally what would go here is a percentage. Um, and Institutional ownership means um, mutual fund managers, pension fund managers, um, institutional money management, basically. So what percentage of the stock do they own? Um, and that can sometimes tell you things as well. So the last two items here, we have the dividend and the yield. Um, so let's explain what a dividend is, basically. Um, if you have a large, very profitable company, um, the board of directors might say, okay, we're going to start giving back some of our profits to our shareholders in the form of a dividend. So they might declare uh, an annual dividend. So let's say we had a $100 stock, and the board of directors say, okay, we're going to declare a $2 per share dividend this year and every year um, going forward as best we can. Um, so that represents a yield of 2%, $2 on a $100 stock. Now let's say that that stock drops to $50 per share because of I don't know, market turmoil or what have you. The dividend is going to stay the same unless the board of directors cuts it. Um, so in this case, if the $50 stock is still paying a $2 per share dividend, then that's going to be a 4% yield. In any case, that pretty much sums up the stock quote um, tutorial on where does all my money go.com. Thanks for joining us and uh, tune in next time.